at some point um, said contractors started living in the house, um, which I think as a lot of uh, other investors will tell you is, is generally never a good idea. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so a little bit of backstory. Um, the previous owner bought the house, I believe, like in 2017. And he, he had had somebody who was working on the house. They were actually planning on rehabbing the house uh, and I believe selling it themselves. Um, he had a contractor or handyman who was doing the work for him. At some point, um, said contractors started living in the house, um, which I think as a lot of uh, other investors will tell you is, is generally never a good idea. Um, <laughs> and, no. as, and as the neighbors will tell you, um, was a very uh, rocky couple years uh, around that house. So. Are, we, are we being generous by calling this uh, other contractor an actual contractor? I feel like we're being generous by labeling them as an actual contractor. I mean, just, uh, you know, I guess anybody that holds a hammer can call himself a contractor, but I mean, it's just uh, more or less yeah. Craigslist schmo, right? Yeah, probably more on the um, handyman spectrum. Um, so they they ended up, the previous owner actually ended up evicting the tenant. I guess it was a long, messy eviction. Um, and then once they got him out of the house, they basically just decided that he was over it. And um, that's when they decided to sell. So when we came along, the project was actually about halfway finished. Yeah, so like I said, this uh, particular place is already like mid rehab. So we just gotta get in here um, and get it cleaned up, get it finished up. So a lot of, um, a lot of the drywall stuff, a lot of paint already been done. Um, like I said, it's a three, two. So we've got, um, we've got living room, here's, front door um, got our living room here and then we have this uh, full bath that uh, has been added here on the first floor so that definitely helps things big dining room area um, this place got all new windows uh, with the exception of these two so we're gonna go ahead and get those pulled out, get a couple new ones in there. Again, kitchen midway, got new cabinets in. Um, need a little straightening out. Um, we'll, get, we'll get some granite in here on top of those. Uh, these hardwood floors in here are pretty rough. I guess as they took out a wall here. So we've got several spots there. Uh, are pretty damaged so I think we're gonna probably just go over top of them uh, flow to floor over top uh, maybe future owner will want to save them at some point that made it less of a rehab um, the the big concern we have usually with projects like those is knowing the guy who is there doing the work um, you are often concerned that you're actually going to need to go in and redo things. It wasn't necessarily the case uh, on this particular house, but a lot of the stuff was done. Um, so we were able just to come in the final 30,000 and get everything finished up. So what would you guys end up having to do? Sure. Um, so we did, um, there was hardwood floors in the house. So we got, those were in pretty rough shape. So we put all new flooring in, um, luxury vinyl plank on the first floor and then carpet upstairs. Um, the kitchen had all new cabinets installed. Uh, that was basically it. So we brought in, we put in granite, um, uh, did tile backsplash, brought in the appliances. Um, we had a couple windows, I think like three, all new windows with the exception of three. So we got those replaced. Um, 
there were some pretty significant framing issues uh, in the attic with the roof, which I actually thought was going to be a big deal. Uh, turned out not to be. And general exterior pressure washing. Uh, we did some tuck pointing of the chimney and we actually did an exterior paint job uh, of the trim, which we somehow managed to pull that off in February, but got it done. Talk to me about the vinyl flooring, the luxury vinyl flooring. I know in the rental game, we use a lot of, uh, you know, lower cost vinyl flooring. We don't go the luxury vinyl flooring route, but what led to the decision to do that versus hardwoods? Obviously, I'm assuming it was cost and kind of break down the cost difference for me. The nice thing about that flooring is it goes in really quick and really easily. Um, so this particular house had all of the existing hardwood floors. They were just in really rough shape. So there were sections on the first floor that had some pretty significant like cupping. I assume was from water damage. And then in the living room, there was actually a wall that had been removed. So there were sections of the floor that were missing hardwood where it never existed previously. Um, and then a lot of random just broken sections uh, on the second floor. So the nice thing about the, the LVP flooring is it just floats over whatever existing floor is there. So sort of my thinking was that we just drop in this new floor, it looks nice and new, and then the future owner um, can be made aware that there are existing hardwood floors there if, if somebody wanted to uh, put the money into uh, saving them at some point down the road. You guys ended up selling this thing for two and a quarter. What value, like where in your particular market, Columbus, Ohio, where is the cutoff point where you could no longer get away with utilizing a vinyl product versus an actual hardwood? Uh, it's probably in that to a realm, I would imagine. Um, honestly, for the bulk of what we're doing, we're, we try to stay under that 250 mark um, on the sales side. But um, yeah, it's probably right there. And again, this one was a little bit unique because uh, my plan all along was to just cover the hardwood. And in that way, it was accessible for repair uh, for the future. Why, why do you guys like to stay under that 250 mark? Yeah, um, I, mean, I think like in Columbus, um, that sort of that 150 to 250 is, is actually like an affordable range. Um, so especially right now, houses in that range are just flying off the MLS in hours. Um, so that's one sort of key factor is is you know that they're gonna they're gonna sell fast. Inventory's low here. Um, there's a lot of people looking for that product. Another another thing I noticed about your particular flip, and I imagine this has a lot to do with the price point, is you guys didn't actually need to rebuild the garage. It appears that you guys have no garage. I don't know if it was gone before uh, or if you tore it down, but you sold this for two and a quarter without a garage. Am I correct in my assumption that this would probably be the top? price point you can get away with uh, not having a garage for your your buyers yeah um and this this particular neighborhood is actually interesting because it's a really established neighborhood in a pretty rough zip code in columbus so the bulk of that zip code um is not homes are not two and a quarter so we did struggle with the garage a little bit. A lot of our comps um, in like 230 to 250 range um, did have garages. So we kind of went back and forth on if that made sense or not. And it just wasn't quite um, in the budget. Very good. And as far as the sale went, you know, you guys did a great job. The listing looks nice. Uh, you know, it looks like you guys got it professionally staged. How'd you go about selling it? You hire an agent and uh, he's the one that handled the staging. And, uh, how, you know, you got any tips for everybody on how to properly market your listing so you can get in and out and make sure you make that $40,000 profit? Yeah, so my partner, uh, Harvey Jurgen, uh, who was actually on a previous episode of this show, but um, he's, a, he's a real estate agent, so he handles 
um, the bulk of our listings, we have been uh, hiring out some of our other listings recently, some that are surrounding areas of Columbus. Um, but yeah, so he, he listed and, and manages that in. Um, as far as staging, that, um, that's somebody that we work with here locally in Columbus. We, we've basically decided from the beginning when we decided to start flipping houses that we would, uh, staging and professional photos are, are really non-negotiable for us. I think that there's a lot of houses that get listed with terrible photos and uh, awkward rooms and things that you can't quite figure out. And I think the staging and professional photos for, you know, the $2,000 that were into that is, is worth it every time. So we just underwrite that into every deal. Um, but yeah, Harvey uh, is handling the listings. That's a, that's a great tip, Josh. Uh, I think a lot of people, when they get to the end of it, they try to figure out how they can cut corners and cut costs. And they're like, oh, let's not spend this $2,000 so we make an additional $2,000. But, you know, it sounds like you guys have already figured it out that that's not how it works, guys. You know, one of the most important things is the marketing at the end. So it's not like you're, if you don't spend the 2K, you're going to make it. You're probably going to lose it, right? You got to you got to pay to play folks. And you know, you got to put your best foot forward and it costs money to properly market a property, which it seems like you folks have already figured out. Yeah. And I think you know, for us, I mean, like I said, we, we underwrite that in the beginning of the deal. So um, it's, you know, not an issue. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.